welcome back to my channel this is Katie I'm the country crocheter and I have a tutorial for y'all I have had quite a few people from my hometown and from where I live this is they would really like to learn how to crochet so I thought I'd bring y'all a video today and today we're gonna be making this adorably cute little single crochet dishcloth it is dishcloths are the best for learning how to crochet because once you've get it down you've made it you have something very practical to use after you've done it and making something little and seeing that it's done is such a huge accomplishment i love making little things knowing that i've got them done i ain't got to worry about five or six days maybe even a month to get something done it's a very satisfying to get something like this done and i'm going to show you everything that you need for this dishcloth Hopefully everything is very simple and clear for you to understand. We are going to learn how to chain, do a slip knot, and do our single crochet, and then we are going to put on this absolutely adorable little border at the end on our dishcloth. And if you don't want to, that's completely fine. It's adorable without a border on it. So let's take and go on over and we will start on this tutorial. Hi everybody. Uh, I'm so excited to be teaching y'all a single crochet and we're going to be using it for a dishcloth. Something very simple. Get the basics down of how to crochet. For today you're going to need approximately 95 yards or 57 grams of 100% cotton. Uh, Definitely make sure when you are making dishcloths of any kind to get 100% cotton. This is peaches and cream, 100% cotton, that you can easily get at Walmart. For next to nothing, I think you can get one small ball, one small skein for, I think, $3. Very inexpensive, and one is more than enough for one dishcloth. Next thing you will need is a crochet hook. And I am using an I-9 or a 5.5 crochet hook and this is about the average crochet hook size that you will use for almost any project that you have this is a great thing to have to start off with crocheting and this is also easily available at Walmart you will also need a pair of scissors to cut your yarn with after we're done and a yarn needle at Walmart, you can get plastic ones or these metal ones, just whichever one you want to get. They're very easily, you're easy, they're easily available at Walmart as well. Alrighty, now that you've got all your supplies for your dishcloth, I like to take and roll up my ball, my skein into a ball before I start it. Seems to be, I can work with it a lot easier. It's not as bad if you pull something from the center a lot of the times you can get knots pulling it from the outside you have to take and struggle and pull it all through so I just like to roll mine up into a ball before I start first we are going to start off with a slip knot and if you watch other tutorials you know there's millions of different ways to start it but for myself I find it easy to take get I leave a long tail I'll leave it not too long, about two, three inches. I take and I wrap my yarn around twice, and I will take and hold my yarn like this. You're going to take this one from behind, pull it over to where it's in front of this one that was there before. Then you're going to take that one that is behind again. And pull it off of your finger and voila you have a slip knot right, we'll show you that again take get a good little section of yarn start wrapping around your finger once then wrap it again and I like to hold mine between my thumb and my middle finger you're gonna take this back one you're gonna pull it forward to where it's now in front of the one that was at the front to begin with. Then you're going to take the one from behind, 
pull it off and down off your finger and then pull the pull the string now if you have to you can pause it and watch it again and watch it again until you get it now since we've got our slip knot made you're gonna want your crochet hook insert it into that hoop into that loop <laughs> and you're gonna pull this little free string to tighten it up onto your hook now for the single crochet dish cloth I'm going to be chaining 21 it, it's a good starting size for your crochet dish cloth it ain't gonna be too big and it ain't gonna be too small it's gonna give you enough to learn how to do the single crochet now to chain I take and I wrap my finger my index finger wrap my yarn like this and I take and I hold my tail with my middle finger and my ring finger and my thumb and to chain all you need to do is take you get your loop on your hook you're going to wrap around wrap the yarn around your hook hold the knot with your thumb and middle finger and you're going to pull through that loop and that is a chain we're going to do that again you're going to take hold your take and hold your previous chain with your thumb and your index and your middle finger you're going to take you're going to yeah, wrap around on your the yarn around your hook you're going to take and pull through that loop now don't take and pull this knot so tight with this finger when you're starting off kind of keep it loose because the tighter your stitches are the harder it is it's going to be to crochet this dish cloth and it's going to be harder for your needle to go through alrighty we're going to be chaining 21 so we've already got two we're going to take and wrap our yarn around the hook we're going to pull through that's three wrap around pull through that's four take wrap your yarn pull through that is five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty and twenty one alrighty so see there we have got our we have got our chain and it's always best to take and double check yourself and go back and count it through and when you're going to take and go back and count again you do not count this loop that is right here on your hook that does not count as a stitch will it it will never count as a stitch but this one right here Right here not this one on the hook but this one right here that is your first one so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten twenty one all right now that we have got our 21 chains we're going to take and start our single crochet alrighty for our single crochet we're going to take we're going to work into the second chain from the hook so that not the one on your hook not this loop that's already on there but that one right before right after it that counts as your first one so now we're going to go into this second one and all you have to do for a single crochet is take and insert your hook into the top right there so you're gonna have two loops on your hook you're going to take and wrap your yarn around your hook you're going to take pull that yarn through that loop and you're gonna have two loops on your hook again then all you're going to do is wrap your crochet hook back around and pull it through both of them and that is your first single crochet 
Let's do that again. We're going to take and insert our hook into that into that chain. Take, wrap our yarn around. Draw up a loop. You're going to have two loops on your crochet hook. Take, wrap your yarn around again and pull through both of those loops. It's very, it's very easy once you get the hang of it. Draw up a loop. You've got two on your hook again. You're going to wrap your yarn around and pull through both of those. Again, we're going to take, we're going to stick our crochet hook through the top loop right there. We're going to wrap our yarn around our hook, pull it through that loop. We're going to have two loops on our hook. We're going to take, we're going to wrap our yarn around again, and we're going to pull through both of those loops. Then we're going to take, do it again, search your hook. Wrap it around, drop a loop, wrap your yarn, and pull through both loops. And if you're seeming to have trouble figuring out where it is, you can take and pause it, watch it over and over again. When I first started, I had to watch videos five or six times before I could ever get it to stick and before I could actually figure it out. Right here we're going to take and we're going to insert our hook, wrap it around our yarn, pull through that loop, wrap our yarn around, and pull through both of those loops. We're going to do that all the way to the very end. And I will meet you at the very end to show you what the last stitches look like. Alrighty, we're back. We're down to our last two chains on our foundation row. You're gonna take, and you're gonna insert your hook into that top loop right there. You're gonna have two loops on your hook. You're gonna take, and you're gonna wrap your yarn around, pull it through. You're gonna have two loops again on your hook. Wrap your yarn around one more time and pull it through both loops. Last one. Insert your hook. Yarn over and pull through. Two loops on your hook again. You're going to yarn over and pull through those last two loops. And that is your foundation chain. This is your first row. So good job, guys. <laughs> I know sometimes it can be daunting when you first start. I know it was for me. But now we're going to take and count how many chains we've got. Because when we first started out, we had 21 chains. When we worked into that second single, that single stitch from the hook, that left us down to 20. So if you'll take and you will turn your work over where your yarn is, your working yarn is still at the top, you're going to see these little V's. Very easy to see. And that is the top of your single crochet. And to make sure you have the right number, you take and you count all of these. And you should have 20 when you get to the very end. You'll have 20 little V's. Alrighty, after you've counted your V's and you have 20, we're going to start and go on to our second round. And the second round is just as easy as that first round. We're going to take, we're going to chain one. That's very simple. After you've got to the end of your row, right here, made that last single crochet, you're going to take and wrap your yarn around that hook. And pull it through that loop and that is a chain one and for the single crochet you will always chain one before you start your next row so now that we have chained one we are going to turn our work 
and we are going to go back all the way across. Alrighty. Now this, you're going to look and you're going to see that you have, after you've chained up, you're going to have this one and this one. That V right there is from your chain. That That is your chain one. That does not count as your first stitch. The second one right here, that is going to be where we put our first single crochet. So we are going to take and insert our hook. Now after you've finished this first row of your single crochets, you're going to see that you're going to have two of these little loops on your hook, and that is your V. You want your V on your hook. If you take and you t put it through one, it's going to take and pull that single crochet to the front. Or if you stick it into this back one, it's going to push it farther away and look far, uh, look more rigid. And we don't want that. We want to take and put our crochet hook through both of them. And you're going to be able to see your holes all throughout. Where you see those holes at, is that's where we're going to be putting our crochet hook. So now that we've got our chain one, we're going to take and insert our hook into that first hole. We're going to take and wrap our yarn and draw up a loop. We've got two loops on our hook. We're going to take and yarn over and pull through both of those. And that is the very beginning of your second row. And we're going to keep continuing this. So you're going to take, find that hole, find that V right there. You're going to take, insert your crochet hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on the hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through both of those. Let's do it again. Insert your hook and yarn over, draw up a loop, two loops on your crochet hook. We're going to yarn over again and pull through both of those very simple. It's very relaxing after a while once you get used to it. I love sitting down and watching TV or playing with Michelle and I can still take and crochet this all the while I'm doing that. I'm going to take, find that, find that hole, insert our crochet hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, going to yarn over again and you're going to pull through both of those loops. Insert your hook, wrap your yarn around, pull it through and drop a loop. Two hooks, two loops on our crochet hook. You're going to yarn over again and you're going to pull through both of those. Draw up two loops, yarn over, pull it through both loops. Insert your crochet hook, grab, wrap around your yarn, you're going to draw through that hole, that hole, you're going to draw up a loop, you're going to have two single crochets on your hook, wrap your yarn around and pull through both of those. Insert your hook, wrap around your yarn and drop a loop, wrap around and pull through both of those. It's very easy. Like I said, if you're having problems figuring out, just take, rewind the video, play it again, and until you can get it. And I will meet you at the very end to show you these last couple of stitches. Alrighty, I'm down to my last three single crochets. There's my last three V's. One, two, this last one is kind of hard to see, but you can still see that V there. That is where we're going to be putting our last stitch. So we're going to take, we're going to insert our hook, wrap around our yarn, pull through that hole and drop a loop, two loops on your crochet hook. We're going to yarn over again and we're going to pull through both of those loops. Insert your hook. Wrap your yarn around and pull through that loop. That's two loops on your crochet hook. And you're going to wrap around again and pull through both of those. 
Alrighty, and this last one. Your last single crochet will always probably be the hardest to see. It took me a while to under to identify where it was at. But right here, like I said, you see this V? That is where we're going to insert our hook at. So we're going to insert our hook. Oh. See, I still have that V right there on my hook. That is where, that's for our single crochet. We inserted it there. We're going to wrap our yarn around, pull through that hole and draw up a loop. Then we're going to yarn over one more time and pull through all of those. And that is your second row. Now we're going to take and we're going to chain one because every time we finish a row to go to the next one, you need to chain one to build yourself up. Alrighty. For round three, row three, we're going to do the same exact thing. This first V right here is not your, is not your first stitch. That is your chain one. If you ever, if it starts going wonky and building up the sides, you may want to take and pull it out. You may have went into this stitch or you may have went into this one. You may have skipped this one right here. The second the second V stitch right here from your hook is where you need to place your first single crochet. So we're going to insert our hook, wrap the yarn around, and pull it up. We're going to have two loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over again and pull through both of those loops. Insert your hook. Draw up a loop. Two loops on your crochet hook. Wrap your yarn around and pull through both of those loops again. And this row will be the same as that last, that second round row. You're always going to have your two. You're going to have your V right here. You will always want to have your V when you're making this single crochet. And I will show you what to do at the end of our row. So just keep crocheting through all the way to the very end. And I will come back and we will. Alrighty, we're at the end of our chain of our, of our row. And we have got two stitches left. We can see our two V's right here. We're going to take and we're going to insert our hook. Wrap our yarn around and draw up a loop. We're going to take and wrap our yarn around again and draw through both of those loops. And this last one, like I said, it can be fickly to know where you need to put your crochet hook. But all you got to do is just look for your V right there. When you can find your V, you know that's where your last single crochet needs to go. You're going to stick your yarn through the, the loop. You're going to wrap around and draw up another loop. And you're going to have two loops on your crochet hook. You're going to wrap around and draw through both of those. Now, that is the end of our third row. And if you notice that your sides, they're a little fickly, little bits that ain't perfectly straight, don't worry about that because we're going to take, we're going to try and put on a single crochet border at the end of our dishcloth to make it all look nice and straight. Now that we're at the end of our third row, we're going to take and chain one. We're going to take and turn our work. Now, just like before, if you have two, 
look at your V's. Now go into that first one. You're going to go into that second one. And take and insert your hook. Wrap your yarn around and drop a loop. Wrap around again and pull through both of those loops. Insert your hook. Wrap your yarn around. Drop a loop. Two loops on your hook. Wrap around and pull through both of those again. Now I will meet you back at the very end. We will go over that one more time. Now that we're at the end, we got two chains, we got two stitches left. We're going to take and we're going to insert our hook. We're going to wrap our yarn around. We're going to drop a loop, two loops on your hook. Wrap your yarn around. You're going to pull through both of those loops. We got our last V right here. We're going to take, we're going to insert our hook. We're going to wrap our yarn around. Drop a loop. We got two loops on our hook again. We're going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And like I said, at the end of each row of your crochet, you're going to take and chain one. Make sure you always chain one at the end of every row. That way it's going up straight. It's not going to go like this or like this. It's going to go fairly straight. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to keep working on this. Like I said, if you have to take pause, rewind the video, watch it over and over again. And when we come back, I will show you this last row. And then we're going to take and put on the border. And I, we are going to work for 20 rows. That way it's fairly simple. You get quite a bit of repetitiveness. That way it keeps teaching you over and over. And to take and figure out how many rows that you've had, this has always been a struggle for me. But I've slowly figured out my way of how to do it. Alrighty. You have got, if you've, if you've worked fairly loosely or even tightly, you'll be able to figure it out. You are going to see these right here. These little things right here. And this, when you're looking at it, to me I know this is going to be my second row. And there's my first row, so I'm going to go two, four, because see, these are the exact same, right there. So, this one right here, we ain't got one like that right up above it, so I know that's going to be, this is our fifth row. And if you have to, you can take, when I first started, I always had a safety yeah. pin, and at the end of each row, I would take and put a safety pin where it was, and I'd count my safety pins at the end. And I knew that's how many rows I had. So if you had to do that, just figure out something that works best for you as to how you know how many rows you have. And like I said, when you get your 20 rows, we're going to take, come back, and I will show you my 20th row. And then we're going to put on the border for this little dish cloth and then it will be finished. So keep working and I will see you all back whenever mine is finished. Alrighty, now that we have got our 19 rows, my 19 rows, y'all probably have 20. I'm going to show y'all my last row for my 20th. Uh, we can count them here. We've got two four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, and there's nineteen right there. So if you hear noise in the background, that is my daughter playing in here. But we won't let that distract us. We are determined to get this little 
dishcloth used. That way we can use it ourselves after we get done. It's always exciting to use something after you've made it. Alrighty, I've already chained up my one. And I'm just going to work right across this last row. Like I said, this is my 20th row right here. And you can take and make this as tall as you want, as wide as you want. If you didn't use 100% cotton yarn, maybe you picked up acrylic, that's completely fine. You can, t this would be a good size, a good width for a scarf. Then all you'd have to do is just keep making your rows however long you want that scarf to be. So, you can take and use this video for either purpose, scarf or washcloth. I just think washcloths are nice. That way you can learn the steps and you've already got something small and easy to go ahead and use. It's always nice to feel a sense of accomplishment after you finish something and you can use it right away. Okay, that's my 20th row. So this is my completed washcloth. Now, if you don't want to use and do the pattern that's the border, I mean, that's completely fine. It looks good just the way it is. Like I said, you've got these little ridges right here on the ends, which is perfectly normal because that's where chain one is. But you see it's still relatively straight. So if you're done with that, all you're going to do is you're going to take and cut off your yarn. Leave a good size little tail. And you're going to take, and after you've cut it, you would just take and pull up like you're going to do another chain one and just pull through until that yarn is no more. And then you're going to take and weave in your tail with your yarn needle. But we're going to do a border because I like uh, borders make it nice and pretty and pristine. And I love it. I love putting borders on everything. So what we're going to do for our border is I'm going to take and chain one. Since we've went worked up 20 rows, we're going to take and put 20 single crochets right along this edge. So we've got our chain one. And I know it's it's hard to put on a border. I'm going to admit I have I struggle with it on anything I do. But my rule of thumb is like I said, I know I've got 20 rows. So if I had to take, you just kind of find a spot like where these holes are right here, where this hole is right here. See, that's where a chain one is, and then that's where the end of one of our rows is. If you just take and use those as your guides to put your border on, that's completely fine, as long as you have 20 going along this edge. Now, if you've made up more rows, however many rows that you have is how many single crochets for your border down this end that you will have. So that's, it just depends on how many that you've done. So I've got one, two, like I said, just take and working in those holes. You're going to take, go through, drop a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both of those. Like I said, it's still a single crochet. We're just taking and working down our row. Like I said, just keep looking for those little holes. If you have to pull it apart a little bit, you can see. Take and keep working. Like I said, these sides right here, you're going to have 20. So just take and keep counting as you go. And I will see you back when we get to the end of this, to this corner. Alrighty. We're down to our last set of stitches right here. Now that we've got our 20. Alrighty, now that we're at the end. This is where our foundation chain is. 
And if you can see, you've got these lines right here. That's from where we work. They kind of look like these a little bit. We are going to take and work. Work into those until we get to the very end, which should also be 20. And we're in the home stretch to having this little dishcloth made. And these are probably the best dishcloths that you can have. I have plenty of them. And there's so many patterns out there for them. And they clean everything so much better than, than the ones that you can buy. They dry quicker. And they're very durable. They're stretchy. And it takes a lot of elbow grease to get these suckers to to break down. Now that we're at the end here, this is where we started off with. This is our first chain stitch. I'm just going to work right into that. It might be hard for some of y'all if y'all have crochet tighter than I have. But if you haven't, it should be fairly easy. And now we're up to this side again. We're up to one of our sides. And like I said, we know that we've went up 20 high, so we know that we're going to have 20 going straight across here. Now you can take this tail if you want to and weave it in. Or you can take and crochet over the top of it. I'm going to crochet a little bit of it, then I'm going to show you all how I weave in my ends. So like I said, these, I just kind of look for the holes in between the fabric and that'll be right at 20 and like I said you know you're gonna have 20 at the end so that's how high that's how tall we made it and like I said you can crochet all the way over the top of it and it will keep it secure as well or you can weave in your ends just depends on how comfortable you have felt since you've started making this washcloth. Now, if you've noticed that your ends, if this ain't laying pretty well flat and it's really curling up, you know you've probably put too many stitches. Like say if this side right here was all buckled up, you've probably put too many stitches right here. So all you have to do is just take, rip it out and try it again until it lays relatively flat. And if it's got a little bit of curl to it, I wouldn't worry about it because the way I see it, nothing is absolutely perfect in this world. And if my crochet projects are just a little bit wavy on one end, I'm not going to worry about it. But we're coming up right here at the end. Like I said, I've got my 20 up here along the side. See how it's laying flat? Look at that. That's such a nice little border to put around something. And then we are back to the very top where we had started our last row. And it's, this is the easiest side to crochet your border on because you've already got your V's. You know exactly where to put it. And it's just like when we was working up on this so when I get to the end I will meet y'all back and I will show y'all how to connect it cut off your yarn and sew in your end okay right here at the very end I'm just gonna take insert my hook yarn over and drop a loop yarn over and pull through those two so insert our hook Yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over, and pull through both of those loops again. Now we're finally here, right at the curve, right at the end of our dishcloth. Now, it's kind of hard to see. There's this little stitch right here. 
We're not going to go into that one. You don't need that one. That one's our chain one. We're going to skip over here to the second one. We're just going to take, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, drop a loop. You're not going to yarn over again. You're just going to take and pull it through that other loop that's on your hook. And now we're going to take, like I said, leave a good little tail for weaving in. It ain't got to be outrageously long. Take, cut it off wrap our yarn, and we're going to take and pull through that loop. Alrighty, and that is our dishcloth. Like I said, at the, before we put on the border, you had your little ridges, but after you put on the border, it does take and make it a nice little finish. Looks really well. Now we're going to take, we're going to use our yarn needle and we're going to take and weave in our ends. Now, when we weave in our ends, I like to take and go through my stitches and pick up two or three at a time. And if you was to pierce through your cotton, that's completely fine. The more ways that you can weave in your yarn, the better off you are. It's hard for something to pull out your yarn if it's weaved in a bunch of different ways. So like I said, we're going to take, we're, like I said, I just take and I pick up quite a few little loops of yarn on my hook and I just take and keep weaving it through and I just go randomly. That way I know that it's going to be harder if I was to put this in the washing machine for it to pull out the yarn. If you should just go completely straight across it's just gonna rip that right through so if you take and go quite a few different directions you know it's not gonna it's not gonna pull it and then take pull up the yarn a little bit we're gonna cut that pull it through that's one end weaved in now we've got this other one over here and it ain't got much of a tail on it and that's okay because I've already trapped some of it underneath these stitches. So now I'm just going to take and weave this through a few stitches if I can get it. I'm just going to take and cut this off. Alrighty guys, there is your very first single crochet dishcloth. Like I said, if something's happened to it and it's a little wonky, that's completely okay. You're trying and that's all that matters. See, there's the back of it. And these are so simple to make. It's so much fun to do. And this is how I learned a lot of my stitches. And how to do everything was taking and doing and making dishcloths. Because there's so many pretty stitches out there that make lovely dishcloths. Alrighty guys, so we have officially completed our very first washcloth, the single crochet washcloth. I'm so excited that you guys have tried this video with me. I know quite a few of people back from where I'm from said they're very excited to watch my tutorials on how to do it and I really hope that this has helped you learn how to crochet and if it has please give me a thumbs up and comment because the more responses I get the better off I'll be able to tell if I need to do more or if I should just not do tutorials at all and just talk about my crocheting adventures but I'm so excited guys I really hope y'all liked this tutorial. If y'all did, I will definitely have more. We will be making more dishcloths because that's one of the most useful things that you can make. But until next time, I will see you guys later. Y'all have a good day. Bye, guys.